Sup Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. Well, as you all know by now, the pyrolutamide phase 3 study results came out recently and they were sadly less than ideal. I made a video about that which I'll link below, but in that video, I speculated about why none of the androgen receptor blocking drugs have had any spectacular results so far. It looks like none of them, including ru 5 day for one Floridol, Brizula, or even pyrolutamide have shown any efficacy that beats the already available drugs Drugs, specifically the 5AR blocking drugs like finasteride and dutasteride. Now, maybe it's possible GT20029, which destroys the androgen receptor, might end up being more powerful than the drugs I just mentioned. That's because the other drugs just block the androgen receptor, whereas GT20029 outright annihilates it, but it still remains to be seen how effective the drug will turn out to be. I mentioned in my video on the pyrolutamide phase 2 results that I had two theories about why pyrolutamide and the rest of the androgen receptor blocking drugs might be weaker than the 5AR blockers. One theory is that they are simply not strong enough to do the job. Either they are not penetrating the skin into the hair follicles or the concentrations of the drugs are just too diluted to work effectively. That's possible because the one thing that everyone fears with this classification of drugs is that they will go systemic and block androgens throughout the entire body and thus cause side effects. So maybe it just so happens the drug companies are erring on the side of caution here and thus using doses that are lower in order to to prevent these potential side effects, but it's possible the doses are just too low for them to be effective. This could also happen with GT20029, or it's possible it might end up being too strong and actually cause side effects. We aren't quite as far along with GT20029 as we are with pyrolutamide, so we're going to have to wait and see what the final results are, but I am definitely more optimistic about GT20029 than I am about pyrolutamide, since GT20029 uses a totally different mechanism with a lot more potential. The other theory about why androgen receptors might not work as well as 5-air blockers like finasteride is that blocking androgen receptors is not the same thing as blocking the 5-air enzyme and just lowering DHT levels. When you block the 5-air enzyme, you end up with lower levels of the trash hormone DHT. At the same time, since testosterone metabolism is inhibited, you actually get an increase in testosterone levels by about 10% in fact, and that's probably why some people actually report increased libido on finasteride. However, when you block the androgen receptor directly, you end up blocking not just the effects of DHT, but also the effects of other androgens, most notably testosterone. So you may think, who cares about scalp testosterone? What does scalp testosterone have to do with hair growth and why should it matter if we suppress it or not? Well. It's possible that while excessive DHT inhibits hair growth, testosterone actually has a positive role in hair growth. That's right, testosterone may actually be good for your hair. So, by blocking the androgen receptor, you get some benefits for hair growth, but it's not going to be as great as a benefit as just reducing DHT levels because you are also blocking testosterone, which may actually help promote hair growth. So, I'm sure somebody is writing in the comment section right now, but Kevin, everyone knows that DHT is just a super strong form of testosterone. It just binds more strongly to the androgen receptor, and it's like 10 times stronger than testosterone. If DHT can cause hair loss, then testosterone can cause hair loss too. It's just weaker than DHT, but it does the same thing. After all, it binds to the exact same androgen receptor. Well, to be fair, I used to think that too. I thought that DHT was just kind of like a supercharged version of testosterone. However, there's plenty of research out there showing that the effects of DHT and testosterone are not just quantitatively different, the effects are qualitatively different too. What I'm saying is that testosterone and DHT have different effects that can't be explained by DHT just being a stronger form of testosterone. Even though the two hormones both interact with the same receptor, they cause different conformational changes in the receptor, leading to the activation of different proteins in the cells. Certainly the effects are usually similar, but they are not identical. As the study here notes, quote, Abundant physiologic and genetic data demonstrate that testosterone and DHT are not biologically equivalent. Conformational changes that occur as a result of the binding of different ligands form the structural basis for the recruitment of different cofactors to nuclear receptors. These changes may contribute to the diversity of androgen action." Unquote. So it's possible that even though DHT inhibits hair growth, testosterone might actually have a beneficial effect on hair growth. If you go to hair loss misinformation subreddits like Tressless, it is very common for people to claim testosterone causes hair loss. This isn't true, of course, and I did a video showing that testosterone by itself doesn't cause hair loss. It's the conversion of testosterone into DHT that is the problem. So, 
If you are suppressing the 5 ARR enzyme, then scalp testosterone isn't a problem at all. Even if you are on TRT, you shouldn't lose your hair so long as you are on finasteride or dutasteride. But the theory I'm proposing here is that by blocking both DHT and testosterone by using an androgen receptor blocking drug, you end up causing a low testosterone state in the follicles, which counteracts some of the benefits of blocking DHT. This could explain why androgen receptor blockers aren't as powerful as 5 ARR blocking drugs. So. If you block androgen receptors and inhibit testosterone, can that cause hair loss? Does low testosterone by itself actually cause hair loss? Immediately, I can hear someone saying, but Kevin, what about men who get castrated? Eunuchs have low testosterone and low DHT, but they don't go bald unless you're talking about Varys from Game of Thrones. Well. That's true. Men who are castrated before puberty never go bald. However, men castrated after puberty who have already gone bald do not regrow their hair, though the castration halts the progression of baldness. However, if you give these castrated men testosterone, they will then have progression of their hair loss, but that's because they can still convert their testosterone into DHT. This was all shown in a study done in the 1950s by Dr. Hamilton, which would probably be outlawed today. In the study, he examined men from a Kansas State institution where at the time, men with mental illnesses were forcibly castrated and institutionalized. Dr. Hamilton is the same Hamilton of the Norwood Hamilton scale, which is a scale people use to assess and classify the degree of hair loss in androgenic alopecia. So if you give castrated adult men testosterone and they go bald, it's not the testosterone that is to blame. It is clearly the DHT. We also know based on research from the 1970s from Dr. Imperato McGinley that men who lack the 5AR type 2 enzyme as a result of a genetic mutation also never go bald. This is despite the fact that they all have normal or even higher than normal testosterone levels. So. Testosterone itself doesn't cause hair loss. That is a myth. It only causes hair loss when it is converted into DHT. So if the 5 air enzyme is suppressed, then no hair loss can occur. That's why finasteride works. So I'm sure it is inevitable that somebody will say to me right now, but Kevin, what about women? They have low testosterone and they've got good hair, right? Well, Women can have androgenic alopecia too. In fact, it is the most common cause of hair loss in women. Just like in men, it is due to the conversion of testosterone into DHT, and it is not due to testosterone itself. It occurs in women who have a genetic sensitivity to DHT, just like in men. Also, women have high levels of estrogen compared to men, and estrogen promotes hair growth and helps protect them from going bald, which is another reason why hair loss is less common in women than it is in men. So, it is clear that testosterone by itself doesn't harm hair growth, but none of this answers the question, is testosterone actually beneficial for hair growth? Another way to ask this question is, does low testosterone cause hair loss? Well, the answer is not completely clear yet, Jones. While a lot of websites do confidently claim that low testosterone causes hair loss, like this website here, there isn't as much research on this topic as you might think. Here's some research I did find that indicates that low testosterone could inhibit hair growth. In this first study, 285 women with low testosterone levels were treated with subcutaneous testosterone implants. All these women had symptoms of relative androgen insufficiency like hot flashes, depression, vaginal dryness, etc. The women were assessed before and after one year of testosterone treatment using questionnaires. Testosterone levels were also measured before and after treatment. Of these women, 76 reported hair thinning before treatment, and 48 of those 76 women noted improvement in their hair after testosterone treatment. In addition, 92% reported an increase in facial hair with testosterone. Baseline serum testosterone levels were lower in the women who reported hair thinning before treatment. After treatment, the average testosterone level was about four times the upper limit of normal testosterone production in women. So, this study's results are different from other studies of women with thinning hair. In other studies of women with thinning hairs, androgen levels were usually higher than normal for women, which is why it's thought that hair loss in women is also because of DHT, just like in men. Even though the study is flawed in the sense that there were no objective measurements like hair counts, the author still concluded, quote, our results indicate that testosterone has a positive anabolic effect on hair growth, which is distinct from a possible DHT-dependent deleterious role." Unquote. In another study, specifically this one here from Dr. Sinclair's group in Australia, it looked at men with female pattern hair loss, meaning diffuse hair loss, which is an unpatterned version of androgenic alopecia. The study notes that there isn't a lot of research on diffuse unpatterned hair loss, also known as DUPA. 
Now, I am of course aware that a lot of people have requested that I do a video specifically on Dupa, but there just isn't a lot of research on that subject. And like I said, Dupa, it is just another form of androgenic alopecia, so conventional treatments like finasteride and minoxidil will still work to treat it. Anyways, in this study, 47 men with female pattern hair loss and 104 men with typical male pattern hair loss were compared. Nine out of the 47 men with female pattern hair loss had low testosterone levels, while none of the 104 men with male pattern hair loss had low testosterone levels. The mean testosterone level was lower in the men with female pattern hair loss as well, with a p-value of 0.06. The study concluded that, quote, female pattern hair loss may be an early manifestation of low testosterone in men, unquote. So, I think the data on low testosterone and hair loss is limited, but there is some evidence that testosterone is a hair growth promoting hormone and that low testosterone can worsen hair loss. Replacing testosterone in that situation may actually improve hair growth as was seen in the women with low testosterone who got testosterone replacement therapy. So, I think this theory could also explain what is going on in senescent alopecia, which means hair loss in older individuals. In senescent alopecia, men and women develop diffuse thinning of their hair, and their hair loss gets worse, even though most studies show that DHT levels drop with age. In men and women, testosterone levels naturally go down as they get older, so that could explain why hair loss becomes more rapid as we get older. I did a video on senescent alopecia, which I'll link below if you're interested in learning more about the condition. So like I said, I think this theory could explain explained why the androgen receptor blocking drugs haven't looked all too good so far in clinical studies, at least compared to 5AR inhibitors. The theory suggests that testosterone actually has an anabolic effect on scalp hair growth, much like it does for muscle and body hair, and this can offset the hair destroying effect of DHT in people who have the genetics for androgenic alopecia. If you block both testosterone and DHT with an androgen receptor blocker, you will lose some of the hair growth benefits of testosterone. Overall, DHT is far more harmful to our hair than testosterone is helpful, so an androgen receptor blocker will still be useful for stopping hair loss, but since 5-AR blockers just lower DHT while actually raising testosterone levels, they are more beneficial. That probably explains why we've had all of these hyped up topical anti-androgens come and go over the years, like ru 5 day for one Brizula, Flirtil, Pirolutabide, and a few others, and despite all the hype they've gotten, none of them have ever proven to be more effective than even just finasteride. Again, this is all just my theory, and I actually hope I'm wrong, because I do want Brizula and Pirolutamide to end up being better treatments than finasteride. I also have high hopes for GT20029, since I think its extreme potency may help negate any downside to blocking scalp testosterone. It also may turn out that I end up being completely wrong here, and a stronger androgen receptor blocker will in fact be successful, and will rival or even beat finasteride and dutasteride in the battle against the slaphead curse. But researchers have been trying to develop these topical anti antigens for decades now, and all of them have failed to surpass finasteride, which is a drug that was first FDA approved way back in 1992. I think chemists and pharmacists, they need to at least consider the possibility that blocking testosterone does not stop hair loss, even if these drugs also block DHT. So that's just my opinion. Take it or leave it. God bless, and I'll see you all next time.